<laughs> Made it to Cheyenne, Wyoming last night. And... Went over, took a shower over there to pilot. I'm fresh and ready to rock and roll. Your seatbelt's not bolted. Your seatbelt? Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. South to Denver with an empty trailer. Lights off. Lights on. Lights off are the entire interior cabin lights. Lights on are the exterior lights. Hopefully I time this just right to beat the traffic in Denver. Horrendous LA traffic, I call it. I'd stop off at Arby's. Give me a breakfast sandwich. You think this blue truck will try to cut in front of me? Prime Inc. Kind of amazed that he didn't. That's one thing that pisses me off. Truck drivers will do. They see somebody coming. Well, you, they should. They should be paying attention. They pull out right in front of you. <laughs> There's one on YouTube video. The guy just plasters him. Nothing he can do. And put his truck just put his trailer right in the path of that oncoming truck. I attribute it to impatience. Southbound I-25. We're empty. No weight whatsoever, except about probably 34,500 pounds tractor trailer weight. Temperature is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. I think, I don't know for sure. I'm running off the gauge on my truck and it's been idling a little bit so sometimes it has a ten tendency the temperature of the engine to raise the outside temperature just because of the heat from the engine kind of surrounds it raises it up a little bit sometimes as much as 10 degrees if you sit long enough so it's down to 15, so it's dropped a little bit. I'm going to attribute that to the motor. There's the scales. Inbound. Coming in from Colorado, you go talk to them over there. Wyoming's different than a lot of port of entries. Thing. This road's bouncy. Look at my trailer. Um, they're different in the fact that they call you in. You actually have to go inside and talk to them, show them your paperwork and all the happy crap. They're doing 70 mph. Ready to come into Colorado, you'll see the highway change, I think. Man, I had like 22 minutes left over last night coming in from that storm. And I wanted, I like to use up all my time, but there was nowhere to park south of the border. If 
Tula, Mexico, in Colorado, and so I just stayed up there in Cheyenne, which actually worked out pretty good. Got to get a nice hot shower, get a nice hot sandwich. foggy out today. The roads are beautiful. Noise, noise. It is 8.21 a.m. February 6th, 2019. Sure where I'm headed next to take this trailer, drop it off at another shipper in Denver, and then who knows what. I talked to my dispatcher this morning a little bit, Wendy, and told her it'd be nice to get some kind of weight. I guess the surrounding areas are mountains, Wyoming. Probably even out there in Kansas, Nebraska and stuff are going to be hammered with snow. I don't care if I have to drive through it, I would just prefer something with some weight. So I don't have to concentrate as much. Not that I don't concentrate as much anyway. I'm always paying attention, but I've gotten caught. Look away for one second, boom, hit something on the highway. It's like, what the hell was that? You're supposed to uh, look. There's a parking spot right there. I like that. I never planned on staying when I was on my paper log. Shh, don't tell nobody. I'd always just run into Denver. Like, like, if I would have gotten there last night, it would have been nice weather all the way. No traffic. Get right in there, boom, now I'm off the highways. But now, things have changed. The government put their self into the equation. give you guys a little roundup of what the next day looked like. Just be it. We're about a mile, a mile and a half away from the Colorado border. Should be getting into Denver about 9.30, 10 o'clock. Well, probably about 10 o'clock. Perfect time. 10 to 2, you can actually move around Denver. And then from 7 to 5 a.m., you can move around Denver. Those other times, forget it. They legalized weed, and all the Californians came over here and brought their politics with them. Mm. Might have to be leaving Colorado soon. Freedom is what I like. Big government is what they like. The more regulations you have, the less freedom. Oh, wait, how does that go? The more regulations you have, the more freedom you lose. Colorado border right there. And I didn't even change the lane. Ain't that LDW. Anyway, it looks like easy peasy sailing. Let's see what the Colorado sign says. 
Colorado Road Conditions, call 511. I use the uh, web page. That's another thing they messed up really bad. You gotta have a supercomputer just to uh, operate their website. It's so bloated. Wyoming, I can look at the road conditions like that. Colorado, forget it. So what I do with Colorado is I go to their website. After about an hour and a half, I get to the chains section, commercial vehicles. And then I add that page to my home screen. And now all I have to do is click on that home screen page. And it takes me right to the chain section of Colorado. And it tells me whether I need change or not. That's all I need to know. I don't care what the weather's doing. I just need to know if I have to put chains on or not. It's a bouncy day in the neighborhood. Of course, I've got my axles slid all the way up. I was, I should have had them slid back, being that I'm empty and driving in bad weather. But. You actually need them back for all the way or pretty far back when you get in the wind. Um, I don't know. It's, me and a buddy were debating that. You're light. It's windy. Where do you put your axles? Because technically you can put them wherever you want because you're light. Because it'll be legal no matter where you put them. But he said that it's best to put them all the way back. I told him, I go, well, I don't know. Be nice to do a wind tunnel test on that, see what happens. But I'm not a scientist. The plow truck, what are you doing? When I worked for CDOT, that's who that plow truck is. I worked for CDOT up in the mountains, plowing the highways. Back in 97, 98, you had to go and run the route, even if there's no snow. You had to do it. the mileage on the truck would say whether you did it or not. <laughs> but I'm a worker. I, I don't mess around. Whenever I work, I just do, that's all I do. So when I work, I work. I, I don't fiddle fart around. I don't lay around. A lot of the guys that work for CDOT, man, we were working on a fence, and they were actually laying down in the grass, and I was doing the work, and another guy was doing the work. These other two guys who had been there were older. They are just laying around. They didn't care. They knew that we would get the work done, so they didn't have to do anything. Sitting there laying down in the grass, smoking a cigarette. And uh, one time the foreman came up to me. He's like, hey, I'm going to talk to you. I think you were speeding last night. No, I wasn't. Somebody tell on me? Say that I was? He goes, no, but you had 300 miles last night. And I'm like, yeah. It was snowing in one end of the county and then at the other, so I had to go back and forth, back and forth. And he goes, nobody's ever gotten that much mileage before. I go, well, I don't mess around, John. I go, I come in, get sand, boom, I split. I get back out on the highway. These other guys, they sit and read the newspaper. Well, just, it's just, I never had that many miles. I go, look at it this way, John. That was a 12-hour shift. Go, yeah. You go 30 miles an hour times 10. It's 300 miles. Oh. End of subject. Left it alone. That's right. There was a trip when I was plowing. The, the strobes would make you hallucinate because it would stop the snowflakes in midair. air and trip you on your eyeballs. 
then you gotta watch out you're plowing the shoulder. You gotta start from the middle lane and go all the way and then come down the middle lane the other way and then go back on the shoulder and then go back on the shoulder the other way. You got the whole highway done now. But when you're doing the shoulder, you had to always be vigilant because there could be a car parked, ran out of gas, broke down, who knows whatever. <laughs> You're not paying attention. You're plowing right off the highway. Did I learn anything plowing in snow? Yes, sir. Had a thing that said if you get stuck and have to get pulled out, you have to buy the shop a case of beer. Of course, it was divvied up, and the drivers had to take it home. If you were on call, though, you couldn't drink it. I, they wanted me to stay. They talked me into staying and working for CDOT, working for the state. Get paid once a month. Man, I was going broke. I was starving. I told them, I go, look, dude, I tried it. I gave it a whirl. But I, I ain't making any money. $1,500 a month after they took my taxes. I went back to doing concrete pump truck, mixer truck, taking them up 4 by 4 up in the hills, 6 by 6 I was bringing home $900 a week. Big difference. Anyway, see you in a bit.